Welcome to the case presentation. Today, we will share a comprehensive case study of a 20-year-old Thai male who has been diagnosed with an ACL injury and ramp lesion in his right knee. A 20-year-old Thai man presented with right knee pain persisting for six months following a futsal-related injury. He reported a direct impact to the knee accompanied by a twisting motion resulting in a popping sound, swelling, and episodes of the knee giving way. Physical examination revealed no quadriceps atrophy, full range of motion. Varus and valgus stress tests were negative at both 0 and 30 degrees. The Lachman test and pivot shift were positive, suggesting ACL insufficiency. Negative McMurray test. MRI showed a complete tear of the mid-anterior cruciate ligament, ACL, and a peripheral tear at the meniscal capsular junction of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. These key findings will guide our treatment approach. I firstly started with harvesting the rectus femoris autograft by making a vertical skin incision at one finger breadth from the upper pole of the patella. When you get in, remove the fat tissue. You'll see the white tendon and the red fiber on the lateral side is the vastus lateralis. Incise the tendon tissue here, just next to the vastus lateralis. Incise just the tendon tissue and then move slowly to the medial side. Use the right angle clamps to go underneath the tendon, just the superficial layer. Retrieve the core tape under the graft. Move the core tape up and down a few times to strip the tendon tissue. If you incise the tendon tissue too distal, the quadriceps and rectus femoris will blend together. Go more proximal, they can be easily separated. Use Metzenbaum scissors to separate the undersurface. You should see the fat tissue. You should pass the Metzenbaum freely along the, the undersurface. On the scope view, make sure you can pass the Metzenbaum freely to avoid premature cutting. This one is a hard tendon stripper. I got it from India. It's about seven millimeters in diameter. Very stiff one. The direction is toward the anterior superior iliac spine. This way is safe. You'll never injure the femoral neurovascular structures. Now I got it. Very long. I'll show you how far it is. At this length, it's enough for ACL and PCL reconstruction. I always go to the patellofemoral joint first. I called it the meeting room. We clean the Hoffa fat pad, then drop the leg down. You can see the empty wall sign indicating that the ACL is gone. It's been six months since this patient's injury. Here is the previous ACL femoral attachment. I prefer to create the femoral tunnel lower and occupy the space that covers the femoral footprint. Here you can see the residence ridge and bifurcate ridge. I also identify the tibial footprint, which I will discuss later. In the lateral compartment, the lateral meniscus and the cartilage are in good condition. On the medial side, the medial meniscus and the cartilage are also unremarkable. Always put your camera in the back of the joint. Drive the scope between PCL and the medial femoral condyle. This is called the Gilquist maneuver. Now the camera is in the back of the joint. You see, I think that's a ramp lesion. There's a crack of the meniscus. We need to probe. I inserted a needle at the landmark for the posteromedial portal. Just like when you're creating the posteromedial portal, always check the transillumination of the saphenous vein. The benefit of this technique is that it helps prevent damage to the saphenous nerve. That's the ramp lesion. From the 30 degree lens, you can't see it well. So I switched to the 70 degree lens. 
With a 70 degree lens, you can get a better view of the ramp lesion. This lesion involves the separation of the menisco capsular junction. I think it's going to heal on its own. I plan to place a single stitch here, but we'll come back to address it later. Now we focus on the femoral side. You see from the 70 degree lens, you got a wider view of ACL femoral footprint. I will create femoral tunnel. The guide pin is on the bifurcate ridge. It's between the PL and AM bundles. Make sure to read the scale before the cannulated drill penetrates the far cortex. If it's more than 20 millimeters, that's fine. I prefer the femoral tunnel length to be around 30 millimeters. After preparing the graft, it measures six centimeters in length. I prefer the femoral socket to be 12 millimeters in length. This technique is called step reaming. We start with the smallest diameter, gradually increasing, so we won't blow out the posterior cortex. Always check the posterior cortex to ensure it's intact. If you find a very thin posterior wall, I recommend reaming a bit at the anterior wall. This will cause the reamer to shift forward, allowing you to create a more anterior femoral tunnel. Be careful not to scratch the medial femoral condyle with the reamer especially in patients who are very obese. I always create the femoral tunnel first before repairing the ramp lesion. I avoid deep knee flexion after the ramp repair because it can damage the repair. After creating the femoral tunnel, we shift our focus back to the ramp lesion at the back of the joint using the Gilquist portal. A lot of bone dust was cleared away to ensure a clear view. This ramp lesion isn't too bad. I'll use only a 70 degree lens and work from the posteromedial portal. However, for a longer lesion, I'll use the intercruciate transeptal approach. When you switch off the light, the transillumination becomes very apparent, allowing you to avoid damaging the vessels and nerve. The ramp lesion was repaired using two posteromedial working portals, high and low posteromedial portals. I used only non-absorbable sutures for the repair and no additional implants. I made two bites, one from the capsule to the tear site and the other from the meniscus to the tear site. Together, they make one big bite. Now I've got a stable ramp repair. One stitch is enough. The healing potential in this vascular zone is good. Next, I will create the tibial tunnel. I position the tunnel very close to the tibial spine, more anterior than it was previously. Since we tend to have short tibial tunnels, I set a steep angle of 65 degrees, resulting in a tunnel length of 52 millimeters. My tibial tunnel is quite large, about 10 millimeters in diameter. I perform retrograde reaming of the tibial tunnel. The advantage of this technique is that you can preserve the bone stock because you don't need to ream all the way through as was done in the past, which resulted in more bone loss. Here you can see the aperture, which is still quite far away. Watch the button flip and confirm it was flipped by not being able to pull button back down tunnel. Pull on one tail at a time. First, pull on one tail for 3 to 5 millimeters, then pull on the other tail for 3 to 5 millimeters. Final reduction is complete once the graft reaches the socket back wall. Cycle the knee 10 to 20 times. This actually depends on surgeon preference. Loading the ultra button device into the X10 button device. Complete the tibial fixation. Pull on the adjustment tails as per the previous technique to ensure the graft has reached the back of the socket wall. It's like raising a flag on a flagpole with a pulley at the top.
The ACL graft has a shiny, smooth appearance. There's no impingement on full extension, even though it's 11 millimeters in diameter. I can feel the graft slacking when using the screw for tibial fixation. I can feel the graft slacking when using the screw for tibial fixation, and you cannot solve that problem with the screw. By using the button, I can retention it after pretensioning at 90 degrees of flexion. You'll see the graft tighten up a little, ensuring that each bundle of the graft is under good tension. Ensure that the graft has no lateral wall impingement, no notch impingement, and no impingement with the PCL. Overprotection is not good for rehabilitation. If you overprotect, you will have muscle atrophy. You see, even we harvested the rectus femoris, the patients still have good quadriceps function. In a healthy muscular man like this, I let the patient walk right away. No protection. The recovery is faster.